Yes, people, what's happening? Hope you guys are all doing well. We are back and the Premier League football is back and Manchester United will be taking on Fulham in the season opener at Old Trafford. Sounds good, doesn't it? Under the floodlights at the Theatre of Dreams for Premier League football yet again. And I am really, really excited about this one. We've obviously unveiled Delit and Masrawi this week and they're already in that squad. Eric Ten Hag has been speaking ahead of the season opener and has already... Some people jumping on his back, misquoting him, taking his quotes out of context. You you name it, they're doing it right now. And it's proper typical stuff that you very rarely see any other club or any other manager kind of indulged in. They always love to grab Manchester United managers and do it and twist all their quotes. And we've seen them flying about and I'm going to get stuck into that and have a little rant about that too. I'll be giving you my 11 for that game against Fulham and Will Delit and Masrawi be in it. I think I'm going to put them in mind, to be told, you <laughs> because we need them at the back. And fingers crossed, they will be fit. We'll get stuck into the quotes from Eric Ten Hag in his press conference as well. Some of these quotes have sent people into a bit of a meltdown. But you've got to ask them, what the hell is wrong with you? The manager has said some fairly normal things that you would expect the manager to say at this time of the season, especially after a preseason where a lot of our players were playing in Copper America and Euros and all that kind of stuff. A lot of them have joined back up late. And the manager's obviously going to comment on that. But yet, people think he's getting his excuses in early. What the hell are you like talking about? Make sure you're hitting that like button, commenting, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. As I said, I'll be at Old Trafford for that game. Make sure you're keeping it locked, actually, as well. That's a reason to subscribe and get your notifications on. Because as soon as I leave Old Trafford, I'll be recording my reaction and getting it up on this channel. So make sure you're keeping it locked for that. But yeah, in this video... We're just going to have a little chinwag about the season ahead, about the game ahead, about my 11. And I've got to say, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Obviously, Man United have done bits of business already. Some impressive bits of business, if I'm honest with you. When you look at the combined deal to bring in Masrawi and Delit, you've got to say, pretty good business. We were we were offered Jared Bramfway at £70, £75 million. Pounds, and Manchester United have gone, actually, let's park that. We'll go out and do business. And then managed to get Mathis de Ligt and Masrawi for a whole lot cheaper than that. Which I've got to say is real good business. You add in Joshua Zerksy, you add in Lenny Yaro, albeit he is currently injured, unfortunately, but for Manchester United. Fingers crossed on a speedy recovery for him. And things are starting to look a lot better in our match day squad. Obviously, we've still got bits of business to do and the rumours will continue to swirl around over those holding midfielder potentially coming in. And has been taught we'll make two further signings. Two further signings. Is that going to be a left back? Is that going to be another attacking player? Who knows? But hopefully we get a hold of that midfielder and then maybe one more as well. But we won't get lost in transfer talk and transfer rumours in this video. You just like want to hear my thoughts of that game against Fulham. And it's going to be a pretty difficult game, I think. It's a difficult game to open up with. Obviously, you generally want to be at home. We've had some good openers. Again. Remember the opener against Fulham when Ru Van Nistelrooy scored a couple? I think Louis Saha did as well in the Pizza Hut shirts. That was a that was a great day of Premier League football, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, Fulham coming here with they've just bought Emil Smith Rowe. They were in the market for Scott McTominay and thinking out loud here, like Ed Sheeran. But part of me feels maybe Manchester United kind of held them up on the Scott McTominay deal because we were playing them first. And typical Scott McTominay, he'd probably go and stick in a performance against us, grab a goal as well. So maybe we're playing a little bit of hardball and waiting. Once that game go is over, we'll go, you know that 20 million you've got? We'll take that, actually. Um, obviously, he's being linked with Napoli and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, Manchester United, Fulham. And this is the quote that everyone's gone mental about. Um, he's kind of said, we're not fully ready. We had the USA tour squad and we've added the players who were at the Euros and Copper America and now the new signings. And now we have to make a team from that. But the team is not ready, but the league starts. And that was a quote that was taken from ESPN, who missed out a lot of his quote as well, where he was saying, we know what our targets are. Yes, we might not be fully ready, but the league campaign is here and we have to go for it. And we have to be ready for that game. And we know what the manager's talking about here. Players that weren't on pre-season tour. Managers would like to get a full six weeks with all of their players in. Now, in an ideal world, that happens. and But we don't live in an ideal world. And we obviously have players that were at the Copper, America, um, at the Euros and joined up late. Ideally, they'd have a, a bit more in their legs. Ideally, you know, it wouldn't have just been playing in that community shield. So I don't see where all the madness has come from. Where will, oh, Ten Hag's getting his excuses in early. Have a fucking day off, man. Some people just always constantly negative and looking for a way that can spin 
um, you know, the context out of control and try and label the manager looking for excuses or he's moaning or he's this or he's that. The geezer was asked about his squad. Is the squad fully ready? If he was to say, yeah, you'd go, the man's an idiot. Some of these players have just returned from the Copper and from Euros and that quite late. They didn't have a full... So I don't get what some people are doing. What are you doing, in fact? Absolute mental. But I'm not going to let that blow my buzz because I am actually quite excited for this season. And I know people are sat at home going, but Adam, you say 21 is coming every year. But Adam, you know, this, that, and let's see what... I can be excited, all right? I can be excited. And I think there's reason to be excited. I think the change of direction above the manager is really really good in terms of the club and the boardroom level and all those changes that they've made and while i was out there in america you got a real feel for you know just seeing those guys pitch side seeing those guys at training ground you know the likes of ashworth the likes of wilcox the likes of barada etc and barada's actually done an interesting letter will be in the match day program for fans and it was great to hear him addressing the fans and speaking directly to the fans now it's quite a long letter if you want to find it, I'm sure you can just type in his name um, on Twitter and you'll find it or, or, or on Google and you'll find the latest statement that he's made because a few journalists have covered it. But it was really great to hear someone that isn't the manager kind of addressing the fans, addressing our expectations, even if they're not going to say everything that you want them to say. They're not going to, you know, show all of their cards and they're not going to tell you what they're doing in, you know, exact details in the transfer market and all that. But it was really good to have someone addressing the fans, speaking to the fans and speaking from a position of power at the club to let us know that they are trying to do the right things to get us back on a successful level. And all those changes, I mean, you've seen at Newcastle, once they got rid of their previous owner, Ashley, and the new ownership came in and there were people that wanted to bring success to the football club, um, you kind of saw a whole sea change. And even without changing the whole squad or uh, much of the squad, they managed to just renew that energy within the club and renew the direction, renew the confidence and positivity going forward. And I think that can rub off on everyone. Also, when you've got the likes of, it's not just the manager that you have to impress. You have to impress the Baradas, the Wilcoxes, the Ashworths, etc. Players are going to be kept on their toes. They're not going to want to fall out of line. Because if you fall out of line with this manager, you're going to have a problem with the rest of the, rest of the hierarchy as well. Um, so, you know, I'd like to think they keep everyone honest. They keep everyone working. They keep, you know, players are going to be thinking, I quite like this contract that I've got. I don't want to lose that. You know, if these guys are watching us, how we're performing for the manager. Even if the manager goes, they'll get us out of there. And Barada had, the, I read up on Barada and he had this kind of thing at City where it was like, if you don't cut you after two years, you're out of there. Now, with some instances and some younger players, you need to, you know, take considerations that, you know, you're not going to get the finished article in two years. But for a lot of players, you kind of know whereabouts you are within those first two years. And players will be pressured into performing. And that's what we need because pressure, as we know, will make diamonds. And fingers crossed, we see a few diamonds at Old Trafford on Friday night. Now, really, really looking forward to that game. We have to be wary of Fulham because I think they're a really decent side uh, with some very, very talented players and they're going to come to Old Trafford. Who knows, Andres Pereira might stick one in the top bins or something mad like that. Although, I'm feeling quietly confident about the game. Um, the team that I would play in this game, um, and the manager has said, Mathis De Ligt and Masrawi are part of the squad. They will be part of the match day squad. My team for that game is as follows. Anana in goal, pretty straightforward. Then I've got Lissandro Martinez in his rightful position at centre-back alongside Matish De Ligt. I fucking love Matish De Ligt. He looks like he's the absolute bollocks and he's a player that's coming in, right age, a little bit experienced, but still got loads of year, good years ahead of him. Um, he's done really well at Bayern Munich, at Juventus, at Ajax, coming to Old Trafford now. The biggest club he's ever paid for. There's going to be different pressures, but he looks to me like a proper Premier League defender and I can't wait to see him in that red at Old Trafford. At left back I'd go with Diogo Delo, put him over there at left back and play Masrawi in his familiar position at right back. Obviously he can too switch over but I just feel for the first game give him an opportunity in his familiar position. We know what Diogo Delo can do at right back and I think just getting him to play at left back and let Masrawi play in his familiar position. In that midfield, we obviously need to work on that midfield and we need to improve and bring in someone in, in there. And obviously we've got Collier who's been added to the squad as well. But I'd go with Casemiro, Mano and Bruno Fernandes. Casemiro's performance against Manchester City for me was a much more improved performance from Casemiro. Much more improved than the ones we've seen in pre-season as well. Although in pre-season, he has looked a little bit 
more leaner. He's looked a little bit more fitter. He's looked like he's ready for the season ahead. And I think Casemiro being doubted by different people and, you know, called to question his abilities and whether he's still got it and stuff. He's got a real big point to prove as well. Now, I don't think we can play him week in, week out like we did last season. I think that's when you'll see issues. But if we bring someone in that we can rotate with him, and I think we could see a return to former glories of Casemiro. Manage him, wrap him up in cotton wool, keep him fresh. Don't be playing him every single Thursday, Sunday. Th you know when the Europa League comes around, look after him and look after those legs because we're going to need him throughout the season, especially if we don't end up signing that midfielder that we need. So I'd go with Casemiro, Bruno and of course Kobe Mano. And my front three. Now, Garnacho was excellent when he came off the bench against Manchester City. I'd start with I'd start with it's a difficult one you know because is Joshua Xerxes ready to start if Joshua Xerxes was ready to start surely he would have been kind of involved in the in the community shield game so maybe Joshua Xerxes would be on the bench maybe do you play Bruno Fernandes as a false nine and drop someone else into that midfield I'm really really confused about this one now Maybe I should have thought about this before. But this is the beauty of it all. You get to see me going through my thinking process. Although it's pretty much me just going like this. Hmm. It is good to have a little think while we're here. Rashford starts for me. The thing I'm umming and ahhing about is, you know, because you've got Ahmad and Garnacho who are really in good form, you could play those two out wide with, with um, Marcus Rashford through the middle just for this game. And then you don't have to play Bruno Fernandes as that false nine out of position. You can have him in that midfield area. But you could potentially see Bruno Fernandes start there. All right, this is what I'd do. Ahmad Diallo, Garnacho, Marcus Rashford as my front three. Get them all in there. And if Joshua Zerks is available to come off the bench, then you obviously bring him in for some minutes and for some fitness as well. So that's my team. I am feeling quite confident about this game. I really am. I think Manchester United will hopefully start the season with a blast. Now, remember last season? It took us a varang goal and... Anna, Anna was wiping people out in the box. It probably should have been a penalty and all those kind of things. Fingers crossed we can start on a little bit more of a positive front with the same result. Maybe a few more goals. But we've got to be careful about Fulham because they have got some players in their team that you need to keep an eye on. Do you know what I mean? You have to keep an eye on some of their players. And like I said, Andreas Pereira's probably due a goal against us at Old Trafford. But nevertheless, that's the 11 I'm going with. I'm going with a predicted score of 2-0 to Manchester United. Nice and calm, early doors one. Um, and if we can get a good 2-0 win to start the weekend, it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Being able to kick back and watch the rest of the games as they go on. But that's my team. That's my prediction. I am buzzing for this game at Old Trafford. And like I said, I'll be back outside the ground as soon as the game's finished, recording my review and getting it up on this channel. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. But the Lick, the Majrawi are in my team. Are they in yours? Keep it locked. Get your thoughts in the comments below and let us know what your 11s and predicted scores are looking like. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you keep it. I've said that so many times. I have to stop. See these us YouTubers just get caught in loops of saying, like, comment, share, subscribe, keep it locked. Anyway, I've been Adam Bacola. I'm out of here.